With the upcoming release of Kirby and the Forgotten Land, I figured now would be a good time to take a look into my backlog and find a Kirby game that I've never played before. So, I decided to play through Kirby's Epic Yarn for the Nintendo Wii. If you're looking to get into the Kirby mood and can't decide which game to play leading up to Forgotten Land, then hopefully this video will help you decide where in your backlog Kirby's Epic Yarn should be. Kirby is a character that I've always enjoyed, and when I think of classic Kirby, I think of his ability to inhale enemies and copy their abilities, but this game completely changes that formula. It's something I had no idea about going in. All I knew about the game before starting it was that it was a 2D side-scrolling game, and the visual aesthetic of the game is that everything is made of yarn. There was nothing about it that really stood out to me as a must-play, which is why it stayed in my backlog for so long. But of course, the first thing people do notice about the game the visuals. With everything being made out of yarn, you would think it would be a very restrictive visual style, but I think it works extremely well. As simplistic as the character designs could be with this choice, I had no issue figuring out what everything was. From jellyfish and sharks to dinosaurs and spaceships, everything was easily recognizable. They also chose a bright color palette, which doesn't surprise me for a kid-friendly Nintendo game, but it did help make it visually appealing. They also managed to intertwine the yarn aesthetic with the level design by making certain things hollow, but the vast majority of objects in the background or the platforms you can jump on are filled in with layers of yarn or a patch of fabric. This helps to give depth to the levels, which is used on occasion to allow Kirby to go into the background of the levels, and it also helps separate enemies or objects that can be attacked or attached to by Kirby's yarn attack. When you think of a world made of yarn, you think of things being unraveled, buttons for eyeballs, and being able to swing from yarn as if it's a lasso. And all of those things, as well as others, are implemented into the game, and they all look great. The sound effects in the game range from weird to great. Doing moves like the ground pound can make a satisfying thud on impact, and sound effects like Kirby turning into a car and honking the horn can sound a little cartoony, but I think it fits the overall feel of the game. However, one choice that I did think was an odd one was the narration for the game. It only ever happened during cutscenes, but I think the narration was a little too over the top kid friendly for me. I'll bet a 6 year old child would really like it, but for a 33 year old just coming off of playing Titanfall 2, it made it feel a little too much like a bedtime story. And I do understand I'm probably not the target audience for the game, I just think they could have made it sound a little less like narrating a Winnie the Pooh game or something like that. And with that, Prince Fluff jumped into the cake as well. The two ate and ate and ate, but they didn't balance their eating very well. The music though was really good, nice and relaxing, and it would always fit the aesthetic of the level. I definitely got relaxing beach vibes from the water levels and things like that. With the narration giving the game definite kids game vibes to me, then I suppose it makes sense that the story, while having the underlying thought of world destruction, never really had any sense of urgency to it. Kirby gets teleported to Patchland, which has been torn apart, and needs to retrieve the magical piece of yarn to stitch each section of Patchland back together. When all the pieces of Patchland are brought back, it's revealed that Yin Yarn the Sorcerer is trying to turn Dreamland into fabric. Now, this all sounds pretty typical. Play as Kirby and help save the world. But I think the method of storytelling they use prevents the game from really feeling like there's any grave danger. Again, I assume this was a purposely made decision and I'm just not the target audience for it. Now, if there's one thing that can make a 33 year old enjoy a kids game, it'll be the gameplay. And the gameplay here is pretty damn good. This is a side scrolling game, so the vast majority of the game is played using a sideways Wiimote and it feels extremely natural. There are moments where motion controls come into play, but I would say it's about 5-10% to of the overall game and you never had to attach the nunchuck or anything like that, so going back and forth from the motion controls felt extremely natural. As a side-scrolling game, the level designs are simple but fun, while the enemies are easy to defeat and the platforming doesn't really pose much difficulty. But all that being said, playing as Kirby and getting through the levels is still extremely satisfying. While Kirby can't fly in this game and also lost the ability to steal powers, there are moments where Kirby can transform. You have the ability to play as a bunch of different animals or vehicles such as a shark, a spaceship, a tank, and well, this just about sums up how I feel about them. I just think they're neat. They all play differently, they all play smooth, and they all break up any potential for the game to feel stale. The gameplay does have some flaws though. Kirby feels very slow. 
the walking speed feels like it's in slow motion. And while there is the ability to turn into a car as a replacement for running, the levels don't really feel like they're designed to be driven through. So if you want to collect everything, then you're going to be walking the vast majority of the game. Speaking of collecting everything, every level has objects to find with things like furniture and music discs. While these are required to 100% the game, they basically have zero influence on the story aspect. You can essentially collect zero items and still see the credits. And one of the most fascinating choices they made, and one that really made it feel like a kid's game, is the inability to die. This game has no lives and no health bar. I actually beat the first few levels without taking any damage, so I was unaware of this until I accidentally fell into a pit, and all that happened was that I was moved back a couple of feet, and I lost some beads that I collected. So I assumed the game would work like Sonic, and if I was at zero beads, then I would die. But no, the beads had no impact on Kirby's health because he has no health. The beads are only in the game for better rankings at the end of the level, and as currency for more furniture to buy and collect. And once I realized that, I did stop caring as much about getting every gem in the game. I can always replay a level if I want to try and get a better ranking. And if I just wanted to get through the level, then I had no issue with missing the beads and coming back for them on a later playthrough. The game is also rather short. You can beat this game in roughly 5 hours depending on how many collectibles you want to get. There are some bonuses to getting the collectibles. By achieving certain ranks on bosses, you can unlock bonus levels. And by collecting and placing furniture in different apartments, you can unlock bonus modes. Things like collecting beads in a set time limit or racing an AI to the end of the level. Things like that. And you will need to complete all of these if you want to collect everything in the game. The game also does have a local co-op mode, but I wasn't able to test this, but honestly, I'm sure it works just fine. Overall, there are lots of things I enjoyed. From the visuals to the different abilities, the game at its core is fun. Along with the music and inability to die, it makes for a very relaxing game. But there are things I didn't enjoy. Considering how easy the platforming and everything felt, the lack of death made it almost too relaxing. It made me feel like there was no challenge at all. Even if there was a difficult boss, I knew I had an infinite amount of time to try and beat it. Also, when I realized that collectibles had nothing to do with the story, it made me less inclined to go searching for them. I do think the game's strength is its creativity. To be able to create a game around this visual style is still really cool in my mind. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to get hyped up for Kirby and the Forgotten Land, then you need to know where in your backlog should Kirby's epic yarn be. In my mind, it should be in the middle of your backlog. If you have 5-6 to six hours to spare, then go ahead and play it, you won't regret playing it. But I don't think the game is going to get you more hyped for the new upcoming release. While I wouldn't rush to play this before the new game, I still think it's worth checking out at some point in the next 6 months to a year. And there we have it, my thoughts on Kirby's epic yarn for the Nintendo Wii. Let everyone know down below what Kirby game you think everyone should play before the release of the new game. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up, it really helps out a lot. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe for more video game related content. If you're looking for some classic Nintendo games to play, then be sure to check out my video about the NES Mini. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, thanks for watching.